they have many things to talk about and uh, I found that if we, if we come back to our roots of the monasticism it will be something really uh, very interesting we cannot stop talking about the early fathers and uh, we cannot finish reading about the early fathers you know this is the problem of Buddha all of us we are li living walking in the footsteps of the early fathers but we have to walk in the footsteps through the books we need to sometimes in dreams I want to follow in the steps of those fathers in life yeah. but but I have only the books to teach me. But you know, if you look to the tradition in the monasteries now, anywhere, not only in Egypt, when I see monks anywhere, I can find that the, the steps of the early monks are there. They are following the same roots. If, if I look to the, uh, to the tradition, the way of wearing uniform, the way of uh, eating, the way of gathering, the way of praying, you can feel with my mind I come back to the early father and said, oh, I think this is, it. when you read it and when you see it, you can, you can compare it and you can define what is original, what is not. I mean, uh, if you read something and then you see it in reality, you say, oh, how they were living like that and how they were doing like that and still from the 4th century and still doing this because I remember one, I asked one father when I first came to Egypt I, I saw one father who was living outside <coughs> in the desert outside one of the monasteries I wanted to learn from him and I, I, I asked him father can you, can you tell me how to live here and he said to me what do you want me to tell you? I said, well, I want to learn all about being a monk. He said, uh, you see me, what I do, do it. Yeah. And I never forgot this because this is how to learn, you know, to, to live and to learn by living. So I think the early fathers did like this. This is how they learned. And this is how St. Anthony learned from the angel. What I do, I do it, you know? <laughs> when he got boring and then the angel appeared to him and they showed him how to pray, how to read and uh, how to work and then he told him, okay, if you do like me, you will not uh, get bored. But you remember how he used to go and visit those old fathers who lived, not fathers exactly, but like solitary men. Ascetics people. Ascetics, yeah, who lived near to villages or you know, in... in in solitary places but not far from people so they had some contact yeah. but he used to go and take some virtue from each one like if he saw that one was patient he sit with him and learn to be patient then he saw another one he was always making matanias and crying from his sins yeah. he learned this so I think I am encouraged because by living okay I read the books but by living you also learn by yes I'm sure that's how the early fathers they did it because they they had nobody to teach them. So each one taught his create disciple his and he created his, uh, create his way of life. Yeah. But in the same time, Abuna, you know, uh, not only by reading, but also by, by seeing. This is why I love to visit monasteries. Ah. When you see monasteries and see monks, I mean, it's a very uh, good teaching for the, for the life of the monks, really. And uh, you, you can catch something from each monk and you can learn something from it. The shape of the monks. I remember in, in, the, in the old time, uh, the shape of, of, of the monks attracted me very much. You know, without talking, without seeing anything, just looking, looking at them. Looking down, how they behave, how they are walking, how they are speaking, how they are wearing, what they are wearing is really attractive. Uh, everybody. I think it's very, I agree with you because when I, when I stay by myself for a long time and I start to feel that I'm, I'm very far from what I should be doing, I am losing my, my, 
discipline, I'm losing my, my value of my time. If I go to visit another father and I see how he is living, then it makes me encouraged to come back and start again and to to be... Uh, you recharge your battery, ah, yeah? <laughs> recharge your battery again, yes. Yeah? And that's why I think why the, the European monks, they came to visit Egypt and live in Egypt. And why the Egyptian monks, they went to Europe to establish to to, to establish monasteries and at the same time to visit the other monasteries and the other monasteries communities. And uh, visiting, it's also, I think it, uh, it was very interesting. And this is why St. Anthony himself, he went to visit. Uh, he visited, yes. Yeah, Wadi Matur, for example, and he visited many places and uh, uh, yeah, many. And others came to visit him too. Many, yes, many Sunday came to visit him too, yeah. It was very interesting. I like that story when he went <coughs> to Wadi Natrun and they told him, we want to make some new cells, how can we do it? So he said to them, after the afternoon prayer, let us walk. Let us walk yeah. And we'll walk until the sunset, then we'll build it. So that, from that place, the father can walk to the church, still in daylight. You know. yeah. And that place is still exists, you know, in Egypt. It's very interesting because that place which they call it now Kilia. Kilia. Yeah, yeah. Kilia. Yeah. Because Kilia was established by St. Anthony. Ah. Because when he went with St. Amun, when he asked him to, for, uh, to choose this place, and he went with him to choose the place, yeah. they walk, as you said. And then he chewed the place there for, uh, uh, I think, for the... Uh, Solidarity people, right? Uh, to, to, to live in a quiet place, far from the monks, you know. And uh, there they established their uh, cells, but they were living in groups. Uh, if you go there and see how still all these Manchubias and all uh, these uh, cells, still under sand. Uh, Some of them are excavated, but uh, most of them they are not. Uh, but. Uh, Really, it was very nice how the monks, even when they are living in the desert, they are looking for the deep of the desert. They would like to come inside the yeah. desert, not living in the yeah. desert, no, inside the desert. Yeah. But Abuna, you know, I'm, I'm only coming to Egypt since 1990s, you know. so I haven't seen the old fathers in the monasteries before bus travel, before television, before all the modern features of life. But I think you saw in this place, and I think you saw some of those old fathers. Yes. How did you feel about them Yanni, when you saw them? I feel Abuna, that the monasticism is still going on from the fourth century uh, till now. Uh, you know, even when the, the, the monastery was abandoned for a certain time. But the, the monks like to still continue. The tradition is there. I remember uh, in, in the old monastery, they have very strong tradition for everything. Mm. And they are very strict with the tradition. Nobody can change the tradition. Mm. This is why you can feel that the, the old monks, they are carrying the soul of the early monastery. They are still. I mean, they are, they are living with, because all this life it came through tradition, came till them through the tradition. And uh, I think this one of the, of the, uh, of the reason why the monasticism of the early fathers, still from the first century till now, why? It's very strange, for 1600 mm. years, still the monasticism is there. Because the tradition, the, it's the a living tradition, yeah. living tradition, exact living tradition. Uh, we cannot say it's rules. No, it's a tradition. Mm -hmm. Tradition is very strong, more than the rules, because the rules can change, but the tradition cannot. And because it's like children learn what they live when they live with their parents. And if if a child sees his father and his mother doing something, he will do it when he grows up and he has children. He will do the same thing. So monasticism is a tradition like that. It's a living tradition where you learn 
I feel that I learn by by watching, by living, by sharing. Not by rules. Not by rules. Not. Yes. Uh, I read the books. I read the <coughs> books to to get to get uh, ideas for my mind to what to do. But the most important lessons I learned from seeing my confession father, from seeing the the few monks solitaries that I met, from from going around to 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 look at the places where they were, and. Uh, I remember once when I first came to Egypt, I saw, when I went to Sembishoy Monastery, I saw an old monk sitting on the side of the road with a very old Galibea and his beard not combed, a very untidy beard and skin marked by this. Nobody, people were passing him by, nobody was paying him any attention. But I felt that this man is, this is a monk, what I can learn from by looking at him. Exactly. Even I couldn't speak to him at that time because I didn't know any Arabic yes, at all. Yes. But just I sat and looked at him, and he smiled, and he didn't say much. But this gave me an image of love of the father being by himself but happy, of being alone with God. A lot of lessons I learned just from looking at him. He touched your heart. Ah, yeah. You know the thing that happened to me when I came for the first time Saint Anthony, the first time to enter the monastery. And after the gate, I found an old monk sitting me on the road with the same shape. Uh, the Galabea is not clean, uh, uh, with unclean hats, you know, just sitting without talking, nobody around. Uh, when I look at him, I said, oh, if I will be a monk, I will be here uh, <laughs> in this monastery. Uh, I don't know what's happened. He touched my heart. Uh, See, you can you can read many books which say, "Don't take thought for the for the th material things; take only a thought for the spiritual things." Yeah. Okay, you can think about this sentence in your mind, but what does it mean when you see an old father who doesn't care about his looks? He doesn't wear the dirty galibaya because he's too lazy to wash it. He wears it because he doesn't think about it. Yes. See, yes. so you learn about the monk's separate. He separated himself, his spirit, from concern about his appearance. Exactly. No. That's because it, to us he looks like he's poor or he's he is not washing or whatever. But no, no, he never think about. He that. doesn't think about this. He never think he's about thinking about God only. Mm. So the consequence is that he let himself go physically, doesn't care, because the spirit is so alive. Yeah. And this is how it, the ascetic life came to me. Yeah, I, I mean. Their target was not to, to live as, a, as an ascetic people, no. Aye, 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 Their aye. target is, the vision is God. That's right. Then they left the rest. The vision is God, that's mm. right. That's they never think about what they are wearing, what they are eating. No, nothing. Yeah. And really, it's a, it was very interesting how they put God on their vision, on their thinking, on their mind. I remember when I was reading about the early fathers, how they accept a new monk. Uh, if somebody come to them for the first day, the abbot of the monastery choose some monks to help him to build his cell in one day. Uh, the first day of his arrival. All of them, they, they gather the material, they build his, of course it was very simple uh, uh, cell. And they build his cell and which means Okay, now we have the cell from the first day. Where's your vision? Okay, don't care about where are you living, what are you going to eat, what are you going to wear. No, look to your vision. It was very interesting. Uh, I mean, when, when they ask him, finish it in a day, what does it mean? Finish the cell in a day, now it takes months month. and years. Eh? But what does it mean, finish your cell in one day? It's very interesting which you mean you have no time to think about yourself. Uh -huh. You have no time to think about all the materialistic life. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice.